So I started recording. I got a wicked headache, so I went for a run because that cures my tension headaches. And now my screen's freezing every now and then while I'm recording, so prepare for random pauses in the video. So you read the title, you know what this is going to be, Shalon versus Daenerys. This is going to be an intense female lead battle. I say, bring it on. Between these two characters to find out who's better. I didn't realize how similar these two were until I really started digging into them to get to this comparison, but let's go ahead and figure it out. Just to get this out of the way, I'm going to be including both attributes from the TV show and the book for Daenerys, just because that's... There is, when you have two forms of media, it's just you should include them both, in my opinion. I'm not one of these people who just like strictly discriminates, uh, but that's just me. Let's get into the six categories. You know what they are. Origin, development, role, interest, relationships, and who would win in a fight. Starting off with origin, these two have a very similar origin in a way. They're kind of the two different paths a tragic noble can take. Daenerys had a mad king as a father, and they had to flee when he was overthrown by his underling lords, and they went across the sea. Her brother eventually sold her to a warlord, and that warlord eventually died, and she took over his armies, is the drastically simplified version of Daenerys's beginning. It's actually a really good beginning, in my opinion, and I like it quite a bit for being fairly original and a kind of different way to have a strong female lead become the strong female lead. Um, man, I'm still sweaty for my run. I'll shower afterward. Um, Shalon, on the other hand, has kind of a different path for a tragic noble. She had an incredibly abusive family, as Daenerys also did. She, just like Daenerys, eventually became the person kind of solely responsible for carrying on her noble family's legacy and lineage. And her brothers eventually became in serious debt. And she went off to basically steal something of extreme value to kind of return her family out of debt and into a reasonable financial situation, which is kind of more bland for an origin, I guess. But it did kind of immediately apply the pressure that Shalon needed as a character to really believe the level of stress she is under, which I liked quite a bit. And I thought it was done very well. Both of these origins are executed pretty much as best they can be. You have two incredible authors here working on two very interesting characters they clearly both care a lot about. But when it comes down to who I will award the point to, it really just has to be the fact that Daenerys is to me is inherently more interesting, which isn't really the best thing to give a win on origin because the execution was still great and they're both fairly original. But I just like Daenerys is better, so I'm giving her the first point. Now we get into development. Who develops as a character more? As I previously stated when I've done comparisons with Daenerys, she doesn't develop much besides a kind of immediate flip and then in small ways gets slightly more wise and bold as the series progresses. Meanwhile, Shallan develops quite a bit, in my opinion, kind of going from someone in a desperate, stressful situation to someone who is a lot more in control, someone with a lot more motivation, and of course, becoming kind of a member of a chosen one group. I like that a lot for her, and I think it overall is just lends more to you caring about her character. While people do care about Daenerys a lot, it's not due to her development. Meanwhile, a lot of the reason I believe people care about Shallan is how well she develops throughout the series. Because of that, pretty much just that, I'm going to go ahead and give her the point. Now we have role they play in the world they are in. Both crucial roles. Shallan, kind of a member of a chosen group and someone who really helps develop the world and help the reader understand it in a lot of ways, being in a kind of scholar position. I really like this quite a bit for her. Daenerys, on the other hand, has a different kind of critical role. She eventually kind of becomes our one last hope for someone we really like being on the throne. She is also someone who really helps introduce the reader to the wider world in the Game of Thrones and understand things outside of just the main land. And I like this a lot. This kind of gives her a dual role, similar to Egwene's in a lot of way, uh, a lot of, in a lot of ways from that comparison. I'm actually going to give Daenerys this point because she has a role very similar to Shallan's, but just slightly bigger. Uh, and I don't really give points for chosen one MacGuffin aspects to a character's role. So Daenerys will take the win here for me. Damn it! Next up, we have interest for the reader. I'm going to give a slight edge here and only a slight edge, but let's get into why. Shallan's interest is largely due to the mystery of what's happening to her and her family and how her loyalties develop. But there were a couple just executions of that slow development of her loyalties that were just kind of immediate. Ah, oh, it's not really a problem anymore. Don't worry about it. That 
really crushed my interest in her. It made me feel like in the future, oh, it's going to happen more and more. So I just stopped having a whole lot of interest in the aspects of her mystery. So I just really lost a lot of interest in the whole kind of criminal aspect that was initially given to us of Shalon. And that really hurts. It's basically where her origins interest is based off of. Her interests really develop in book two and book three something and do something very different, kind of her exploration of what's happening. But I'm still going to mark her off quite a bit for that. Meanwhile, Daenerys, as I've said before, is an incredibly interesting character in my f and, I, and I think the most interesting character in Song of Ice and Fire. I'm going to give her a very clear win here. Shallan really isn't the most interesting character, I don't think, in anyone's opinion. That's got to go to Delinar or maybe Kaladin. I have tried to treat you all as adults, but obviously I am the only adult here. So yeah, this point goes to Nereus as well. So now we have their relationships, and this one, I'm pretty much, and this one I came incredibly close to calling a draw because Shallan has some very great relationships, especially in the beginning where you don't really know where her loyalties lie and whether or not she's actually willing to commit this crime. I thought that was great. It did fall off in the second and third books quite a bit, but she had other kind of relationships develop, and the kind of possible romance with Kaladin is interesting as well. But her strongest relationship by far is with Pattern. I am a pretty big fan of Pattern. I think he's kind of social unawareness is pretty cute and the execution between her and Shallan is done very well. It reminds me kind of like the demons from uh, His Dark Materials in a very nice way, and I like it a lot. Meanwhile, Daenerys has a lot of relationships, most of them kind of tragic and horrific, except for a few that actually kind of seem to come from a place of real heart. But overall, I think I'm gonna give her the edge, just because George R. R. Martin writes relationships so well, and pretty much every single person Daenerys meets, there's a crafted relationship there because of her power dynamic that really is interesting. Every time she meets another person who has power behind them, you wonder where they will fall in Daenerys's kind of level of respect that she pretty clearly demonstrates to everyone she meets. Uh, if she makes these kind of snap judgments that seem to be eerily accurate, and they become an indicator of that kind of person for the rest of the series. If you follow who Daenerys likes, you'll usually end up finding a character who's pretty awesome in a lot of ways morally. So I'm going to give this point to Daenerys just because her relationships being used as this kind of moral compass and all being written so well was a neat aspect that I really appreciated. Now finally, we have who would win in a fight. I have to give both these people their main weapon. So Shallan gets her sword, her magical lightsaber sword that many people in Stormlight have. And Daenerys gets three dragons. It's only fair if Shallan gets her magical MacGuffin, Daenerys has to get hers. And yeah, Shallan can't really stop a fireball, so she dies. Daenerys gets the last point. My decision is final. This was a pretty one-sided fight in terms of points, but it really comes down to what you care about more as a reader. For me, honestly, development is the most important point here and counts for a lot compared to the rest, so that kind of helps Shallan quite a bit. And this is just an excuse for me to talk about characters. It's not, a, it's not like written in stone now, especially with how much Shallan could develop in the next couple of books. I would love to know what you guys thought about my opinions here. Uh, Daenerys, to me, is just an incredibly strong female lead that doesn't feel like the cliche we need to make a strong female because otherwise people will be angry. She's just a legitimately well-developed respect given to character. Yes, she goes through horrific things. That's not the point of equality in writing. The point of equality of writing is just giving every character respect regardless of gender, race, and all that. And I think Daenerys is given that to a T even slightly better than Brandon does Shallan, and that's just going to result in pretty much everything else being more fleshed out. Uh, but in terms of which character I actually like more, I think I like Daenerys more, but I'm more curious about Shallan's future uh, because I feel like Brandon may have kind of written himself in a trap with her, and I'm curious to see where it'll go. Uh, but that's pretty much all my opinions here on the matter. I hope you guys are having a wonderful start to your weekend. I will be in Colorado, as I said before, so no video tomorrow or Sunday and probably not Monday. Uh, I was going to do a Kip Guile versus Adolin video, but after recording it, holy God, that was a one-sided fight. Uh, and it might just make people angry at the result, uh, but I might put it out anyway. We'll see. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Drop a comment down below if you want me to show up in the YouTube algorithm. And have a great night and the rest of your weekend. I already said that. But hit the Patreon. You're feeling extremely generous. And have a good one. Peace.